The first and the most important step of using DaVinci on your iPad is to get yourself a keyboard, like literally. Any Bluetooth keyboard will work, else you can even connect a wired keyboard. If you have the budget, the best option is to get a keyboard folio case just like this one. The main reason why this is the most important step is that the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve is kind of nerfed, as in by default we only have access to the cut page and the color page, and not the edit page which is the most important one. The cut page is actually good for making basic cuts, but it's not very versatile. So I recommend that you do everything in the edit page. So first things first, let us open DaVinci on our iPad. And this is what you will be greeted with the first time you open it. So if you take a look at the bottom row, we only have three options. First one is the cut one. And this next one is the color. And the third one is the deliver one. Earlier that wasn't there as well. But thankfully they have added that. So by now I suppose that you have connected a keyboard. So simply press command option and K on your keyboard. And it will open up the keyboard shortcuts page for you. So we simply have to scroll all the way down. And you'll find this option called show page. Simply click on that. And now you can see different options like color, cut, deliver, edit, fair light, fusion and media. So if you have used DaVinci before on your PC or on your Mac, then you might be familiar with this one. But if you're a beginner, don't worry, I'll guide you through everything. This is a beginner's only tutorial. So the primary thing we'll require is the edit page. So we can simply set a keyboard shortcut. That is the reason we needed a keyboard. So for example, let's double click here on the edit page. Let's suppose I want to set it to control and ease. So every time I press that, it will open up the edit page for me. Similarly, you can set it for the fusion page as well as the fair light page. Fusion is basically the advanced form like you can do all those motion graphics and stuff there and Fairlight is basically the audio engine inside DaVinci Resolve it's mostly for micromanaging your audio so I have set all the keyboard shortcuts now now simply save this keyboard preset I'm gonna name it as DaVinci Resolve full layout and hit on save and once you come back to the home page now I can simply press Control and E to open up the full edit page and similarly I've set it to Control F and Control D for Fusion and Fairlight we won't be covering that because this one is a beginner's tutorial we will be only working with this edit page so this one was very important so now that is done we can and finally come to the basics. So my name is Prithviraj and I've been editing videos for almost 15 years now. So at any point if you feel that I'm going too fast, then apologies in advance. You can slow down the video speed from the YouTube settings from that place you know where. Alright, now let's get started. Now the first step is to import our files. So we can simply click on this option called import media and from there you can choose the files you require. You can import from your iPad gallery, your Google Drive or iCloud account or even from an external SSD. So I'm currently importing it from my external SSD because we have a lot more storage there. So let me just open a previous video of mine so I've imported that in so you can see it's imported now and we can simply drag and drop it to the timeline below over here so that's basically it now we have both the video and the audio and in case your audio volume is a bit low and just click and drag it up it will increase the volume and drag it down to decrease the volume as much as you want so we have now imported the video of me talking now we need to chop off the parts we don't require so I can simply take the cursor to the point I want to make a cut and then as you can see there is a scissors icon over here so when you click on that it will make a cut for you and now you can simply press backspace on your keyboard or simply use that trash can icon and it will delete the excess part for you. It's as simple as that. So similarly, I'll just make all the necessary cuts and remove all the areas I don't need. Simply select, take your cursor and press the scissors icon. I've actually set a shortcut for this. Like the layout we opened at the very beginning, I have simply set the cut to S. So whenever I press S on my keyboard, it will make a cut. Else you can just click on that scissor icon. It will just work fine. Now this is in the basic layout. I have made all the cuts I need and there we have the main backbone of the video. And that's a pretty boring video, right? It's me talking all over the place. So now I'll show you how you can add clips and b-rolls into your timeline. So I can simply hit on import media once again and select the video I want. So let's say I want to use this video of mine of this Apple watch. So I can simply select that and it will import it inside. Now what we have to do is select the part of the video that we actually want to use because of course we don't want the entire thing. So once you double click on the video, it will open up in this view page over here. Now simply take the cursor to the part of the video you want to use. Let's say when I'm opening the app door of my Apple watch, I want to take it from there. Now I can simply press I on my keyboard to set the end point of the video and then scroll to the place where I want the video to stop and press O on my keyboard. That is the out point, in and out point. So if this is your entire video, I'm only selecting this chunk of it and importing that. Now I can simply drag and drop. You can even manually select using the key points but won't recommend that. So simply press I and O on your keyboard to select the area. And now you can simply drag and drop it into your timeline. And as you can see, I've actually placed it above my talking shot so that they don't get mixed up. It's basically on the second layer. And now we have placed the B-roll as well. But while you're editing and you have a lot of files, staying organized is often the most important step. So that's what we're gonna cover now. So in your media bin that we have, you can simply right click on that and select new bin. So think of this like creating a new folder. So let's name this B-rolls. And now once we click on that, you can see a 
blank page has appeared and now let's import the bureaus that we want to use so right click import media and select the files you require for example i am selecting these two bureaus of mine of the apple tv so once i click on open it is now inside the folder ready to use now let us repeat these steps again so select the part i want to use and then press i on your keyboard to select the in point and then o on your keyboard to select the out point so we want to use this chunk over here and then drag and drop it inside your timeline and now we are free to adjust whatever we need similarly let us import the second b-roll as well i'm just gonna take a random point and add it here so that is done we have placed all the b-rolls now let's say you want to zoom or crop a video we can do that as well so on the top right you'll find this wrench tool kind of thing it looks like settings so that is basically the track inspector tool that we have so once we click on that you will be greeted with a lot of controls here so for example there we have the zoom thing so if we adjust that we can zoom in or zoom out inside our video it is self-explanatory similarly we can adjust the position to take it left right up and down wherever you want and also we can adjust the rotation angle in case your video is tilted we can fix that as well so these are the basic video controls that we have and you can explore the rest by scrolling down there are a lot more options but there is one option i really want to show you because that is really cool so take a look at this option called dynamic zoom so simply enable that and we're done i'll show you what it does now when i play this video as you can see it is gradually zooming out so that is very important to create some dynamics inside your video movement is very important because no one has patience these days we always need something happening so dynamic zoom is used for that so currently as you can see it's gradually zooming out but what if you wanted to gradually zoom in we can do that as well so under dynamic zoom if you click on this option called swap it will basically reverse the effect and there we have it the video is now gradually zooming inside that's helpful now we'll be taking a look at how you can spice things up in your video and let's take a look at how we can add transitions and that's pretty simple as well so on the top left you can find this magic wand kind of tool over there so simply click on that and you'll find an option called toolbox under which you'll find video transitions let's go there and under this one there is a lot of different transitions so you can take your time and explore all of them what they all do individually so for now i'm just gonna select any random transition let's use this one barn door so i have two consecutive clips of the apple tv and that kind of can get boring so let's spice it up i can simply drag and drop the transition between the two clips over here and adjust the stretch the stretch basically decides the duration of your transition so you can increase or decrease it as per your liking so let me just increase it a bit and that's done so as you can see when i play the video the first clip of the apple tv is kind of splitting in between so that is the barn door effect that we have added similarly you can take a look at all the transitions you just have to drag and drop them between the two clips and adjust the duration by increasing or decreasing the stretch we have so it was that simple right so far we have taken a look at how you can cut your footage import b-rolls and other shots that we have adjust the zoom and stuff like that add transitions and the next step is adding music so again it's the same basically so i'm just gonna create a new folder to stay organized once again so right click new bin and now i am gonna rename that to music and let us import some songs over here so right click import media and this time select a song once the song is imported the steps are again the same simply select the part of the music you want to use press i on your keyboard to select the start point and o to select the end point and drag and drop it on your timeline it's that simple and basically the same thing there is a 99% chance that the music you imported is gonna overpower your voice so we will have to decrease that cause your voice is the main thing and it's background music after all so it needs to be in the background but before adjusting the volume let me show you how you can feed the music for example the video is ending here so I want the music to gradually feed so there will be this point icon so I can simply drag it from both sides so it will create a gradual increase and decrease at the start at the end respectively so this can kind of smooth out your video in terms of the sound and now once that is done let us adjust the volume so again at the start i showed you there's this line in between so we can simply click on it and increase it in order to increase the volume and decrease it to decrease the volume pretty self-explanatory and as you can see it will change the graph as well if you increase it too much you can see and if you decrease it you can see as well so i'll be setting it from minus 12 to minus 14 db at that range should be fine for this piece of music you can take it lower depending on your situation you can work on the audio in more details like adjusting the eq and stuff in the fear light page like we have a lot of things over here as you can see we won't be covering fair light over here because this is a beginner's tutorial we won't be getting into those advanced audio stuff so for now let's stick to the basics using the line we have in between we can increase or decrease the volume that's it we can also import photos or if you wanted to import your logo you can do that as well simply right click import media and let's select a photo and let's just drag and drop it into our timeline we again have the basic controls like zooming in zooming out and stuff like that and let us add dynamic zoom again to get some movement and that's done it's looking really 
really nice. So in case you wanted to import your logo and want to fade it out a bit. So in the inspector, if you scroll down a bit, you will find this option called composite. Under that, you'll have the slider for opacity. So you can decrease that a bit in order to blend that with your background. So it is really looking weird because this is a thumbnail. But if it was a logo, of course, you know what it does. Now let us do something advanced. I'm going to show you how you can fast forward a video or maybe slow them down for slow motion effect. So let me import a new B-roll over here. I've imported this clip of the iPad Pro. And as you can see, when I'm unlocking the iPad, it's kind of happening really fast. So I want that to slow down a bit. I'm going to tell you the keyboard shortcut because it's much more convenient. I can simply press command R on my keyboard. And as you can see, there is a lot of dots you can see on the clip right now. So if you take it towards the right side, it will actually slow down the video. And if you take it to the left, it is going to speed up your video. And you can also see the percentages over there. So this one is happening too fast. So for this one, I would like to slow it down a bit. So I can simply take it towards the right side. And as you can see, it has slowed down a lot. Similarly, if I took it to the left side, it is going to fast forward the clip and it's way too fast. So for this case, I'm going to slow it down a bit. And if you ever forget the keyboard shortcut, you can also do it manually. Simply right click on the video and you will find this option called change clip speed. So let's click on that and you can manually set it as well. We can increase the percentage to speed it up and decrease to slow it down. Simple as that. So far, we have covered all the basics you need and also touched down a bit advanced stuff like speeding up and slowing down your videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button because I keep creating videos on the iPad. So make sure you're subscribed and now let's talk about something more advanced and that is the color because color is really important it can help you stand out and differentiate your videos from looking boring to something unique now we can simply open the color tab that we have finally and this page will open up there is a lot going on here but not to worry i'll guide you through so if you have done any form of advanced photo editing like using apps like lightroom and stuff this will more or less feel familiar to you because all the basic controls are the same so let us start color creating the apple watch footage of mine so i can simply use this contrast icon to increase the contrast a bit and maybe we can increase the shadows so that it's a little less darker and also decrease the highlights a bit so that the blown out parts don't bother us that much and there we have the saturation part so we can add a bit of saturation as well and now this block as you can see it is called as nodes in DaVinci it's basically like a layer many people actually fear this one but nothing to worry these are just layers stacked up like this to create a new node or a new layer you can simply hit on option plus s to create a new node or a new layer and you can even click that icon to do the same and we have a lot of options over here these are too much advanced stuff still i'm gonna show you a few things so for example this apple tv footage of mine is really dark because it was shot in a low light situation so i can simply increase the shadows to match the vibe i want so it's a bit brighter as you can see and i also decrease the highlights a bit so that content inside the tv is actually visible and maybe increase the saturation a tiny bit not too much but rather for this case i'm gonna increase it a little bit more so that you can see the difference now let us go to this curve section so over here we can adjust the contrast and stuff like that so if i pull down the curve from here so you can see it is kind of getting darker we are basically adjusting the contrast and the highlights from here and also increase the curve from the top if you want to increase the highlights color grading is a whole different world so please check out more advanced tutorials if you want to get inside this but for now i'm just gonna show you how i'm gonna grade these so for example let's open my favorite curve which is the spider-man curve it's actually called the spider curve but i like calling it spider-man so what this does is allows us to change the hue of the color that we have so for example there is a lot of blues going on inside the video that we have i can simply take the curve from the right that is the blues one as you can see and the moment i move things around you can see it is adjusting and playing with all the colors over here so that is very interesting and very satisfying to be honest so for this case i'm just gonna bring it a bit down towards the teal region so that kind of looks good so that's what we're gonna do over here we can also change the color temperature like for example there's a lot of blues going on in this second clip of my apple tv so in the temperature tab we can take it towards the right so that it looks more or less warm and not too bluey like the one before so that is that won't be going into much details here so let us do a basic color create on my talking shot of myself so simply open that up and now firstly let us adjust the contrast a bit because it really needs a little more contrast there we have it that should be fine and now let's play with the shadows to get the right balance of the shadows and the highlights and also increase the saturation a bit and now let me show you a different tool instead of the spider-man curve let's take a look at the hsl curves hsl stands for hue saturation and luminance for example this light over here behind me let us try to adjust that so under the curve tab select this option it is for hue versus hue it's basically to change the hue of the color so i can simply click on the color picker tool over there and select the light behind me and now i can adjust the color of that so pull it down and pull it up however you like i'm basically trying to get a teal kind of look on my lights so that should be fine and as you see it is kind of faded a bit so this time i'm gonna go to the hue versus saturation thing select the color again and increase the saturation so this thing is a bit advanced so this will need a lot of time for you to work on so i highly recommend you check out some videos on color grading 
using basics that will help you out but for now let me quickly color the video of mine so i'm kind of happy with how it looks as of now we won't be taking a look at more advanced things just the basic stuff i'm gonna do here but there is something i want to show you for example you're happy with how your color looks of your talking shot and you want to paste that to every single talking shot of yours we don't have to manually set the color for every single footage so we can simply copy paste that i'll show you how so firstly if you click on this button on the top right our timeline preview will show up showing all the videos that we have used in your timeline so now what i can do is to select the video that is not color graded as of now so that is done and as you can see the video on the extreme left is color graded so selecting the current one i'll just right click on the graded video and select apply create and it is gonna copy paste the entire grade over here so that is kind of helpful to speed up your workflow similarly the ending clip as well i'm just gonna click on apply create and this video of mine is graded as well so we have cropped and trimmed the video added b-rolls learned how to fast forward and slow down added transitions added music added photos and also talked about basic color grading as well and now the most important and the final part how to export your video so go to this rocket ship icon over here that is basically the delivery page and from there we can select a preset as well for example let's select youtube 1080p if you wanted to upload on youtube and please do not worry we are not limited to 1080p we can select 4k as well so under preset i can simply select 2160p that's basically 4k and in case you are actually editing for an instagram reel or youtube short click on this button called use vertical resolution so it will basically flip it out for you but this is a full video so we won't be clicking on that we are just gonna set the resolution to 4k and under location select the folder you want your video exported but now i'm just gonna set the location to the downloads folder of my ipad and also i've changed the file name to demo video and simply hit on this option called add to render queue and this page will show up and from there simply hit on render all and it will start exporting your video that is it so once that is done i can find that video in my downloads folder and use it wherever i want and upload it straight to youtube so i hope you found this beginner's tutorial helpful let me know in the comments what else i should cover in my future videos and now if you would like to know what my favorite apps are for the ipad rather all the apps that i use for my ipad on a daily basis then click here on this video and over there i have shared all my favorite apps here for the ipad see you there